Hey. Welcome to iLect Online. Here's a different example of how we include surface tension in the phenomena that occurs with liquids when there's very small gaps between them. We have what we call the capillary action. So let's assume here for a moment we have two very close surfaces that are only 0.2 millimeters apart from each other. Let's say the surfaces are made out of glass. Uh, that makes it easier because that way we know that the surface tension between the glass and the water that's in between and on either side of it, uh, the coefficient is 72.8 dynes per centimeter. Now, we expect that water will be pulled up between the two surfaces because there is a surface action uh, going on between the water and the edge of the, uh, or the sides of the glass slates. So the question is how high will the water be pulled up? And again, what we can say is that the force due to surface tension, uh, which is equal to the coefficient times the length along which the surface tension acts, must equal the force due to the weight of the water that's being pulled up. And of course, the weight of the water would be m times g. So what we can say is that the coefficient surface tension times the length along which the surface tension acts is equal to the weight of the water, which is, of course, m times g, like that. Now, we don't see an h yet, but that will come in just a moment, because the mass of a liquid can be expressed in terms of density and volume. So we could say that the density is equal to the ratio of the mass divided by volume, which means that the mass can be written as density times volume, and we'll substitute that in for the mass over there. When we do that, our equation then becomes the force due to the surface tension is equal to the weight of the water, which is now written as rho Vg. And of course, the volume is the volume of the water that gets pulled up. So it would be the cross-sectional area of the base times the height, and so that would be gamma times L is equal to the density. The volume, of course, would be the width, which is the distance, D, times the length, which is L. That would be the area, times the height. That would give us the volume times G. So that is the volume of the water that gets pulled up here. So the distance, D, times the length, L, times the height, H. Now, the length here, ooh, I have to be careful because that L is not the same as this L. So let me use a different L. I'm going to use a small L here so that we don't get confused. So small L here, which means that this here becomes a small L. There. Less confusion that way. Now, the length along which the surface tension acts would be one side of the one slab plus one side of the other slab, which in this case would be length plus length or twice the length of each slab, so we can write that the coefficient of surface tension times two times the length is equal to the density times D times L times H times G. Notice that we have an L on both sides, so that cancels out, so it doesn't matter how long the slabs are, the height will be independent. And if we now solve that for H, we divide both sides by rho DG, pull the H on the, on the left side, we have H is equal to the left side, which is two times the coefficient, divided by rho dg, rho dg. Now we're ready to go ahead and plug in the numbers that we have. So we have the coefficient, which is 72.8 dyne per centimeter, divided by the density of water, of course that's one gram per cubic centimeters, one gram per cubic centimeter, times the distance between the plates, which is 0 0.02 centimeters. Remember, we have to convert it to centimeters because that was expressed in millimeters. And G in centimeters, uh, that would be 980 centimeters per second square. And that should give us the height in centimeters that the column of water will rise between the two plates. So we have 2 times 72.8. Uh, divided by 1, divided by 0 0.02, and divided by 980, and I get 7.4 centimeters. Wow, that's not a small amount, equals 7.4 centimeters. You just can really tell the wicking action, it's kind of like a wicking action almost, of course it's not wicking, of course it's surface tension, but it's this pull up of the surface tension when the plates are really close together, a distance of 7 centimeters, 7.4 centimeters, which is almost 3 inches, that's quite a bit. Right? I mean, that's how you do that.